This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And before we get rolling, I want to welcome aboard a brand new sponsor in Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch. Now you remember, in our previous tutorial talking about dailies, we focused specifically on Scratch. Scratch is a dailies and metadata powerhouse that if you are serious about doing higher end productions, chances are Scratch will probably work its way into your workflow at one step or another. So again, I wanna thank them for becoming a new sponsor and let's just keep this tutorial going by again talking about dailies. Now in this lesson, we're gonna be talking specifically about DaVinci Resolve and how you can create dailies in DaVinci Resolve for a media composer workflow. All right, so as you can see, we are inside of DaVinci Resolve, and the first thing we're going to need to do is bring some media in to create dailies out of. Now, we're going to need to head to the media pool. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, we'll just navigate over here to the media pool button, click that, and start doing our work. Not quite. What I actually need to do is head to the media module. Now, the media module is actually located right down here at the bottom of the interface, right beside the edit module that we are currently in. I'm simply going to click on it. Now, the reason I need to come in here is so that I have access to not only the bins, folders, etc., that are in my current project, but also to my actual storage. So right now I am in my media one drive inside the dailies folder, and you'll see that I have highlighted the horror show clips. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. There's the nice and neat and clean way and there's the I don't care messy way. And I'm gonna show you both because to be honest, it really doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, at the end of the day, it really depends on your organization, how many clips you're working with, how quickly do you need to get this type of thing done, and you can decide from there. So the nice and organized way of doing things would be to select the horror show folder. I'm gonna right click on it, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add that folder and its subfolders into the media pool. Now, as soon as I do that, you're gonna see that what's happened is, is that a bin has been created or a folder has been created called Horror Show with different bins in each, with different bins in here, each one having their own clips in them, exactly reflective of what was on my external hard drive. Now, instead of going through, making a sequence, dropping everything in, I'm simply going to select all of the clips I'm going to right click and I'm going to navigate right up to the top where it says create new timeline using selected clips. Now I will be asked what type of timeline do I want to create? And this is where things can fall off the rails really quick if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the number of audio tracks just to be one because I have a stereo audio track that Resolve can put the audio to channels onto one single stereo track. Here's where things are exceptionally important. Time code really doesn't matter. The timeline name, we could call what this actually is if we wanted to, card one. Let's make sure we actually have it selected here. There we go, card one. And I'm gonna come to the use custom settings. I'm just gonna drag the window just up here just a little bit. And I'm gonna head to format. Now this footage here is UHD 3840 by 2160. And you'll notice that it's 23976 frames per second. Now that is the important number, 23976 frames per second. We need to make sure that our timeline's frame rate matches our clip frame rate. As far as the resolution goes, that really depends on how you want to work. In this example, we're going to be creating uh, DNX HD 36 dailies, 1920 by 1080. So we actually have the timeline set up exactly the way that we need to have it set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we scale the entire image to fit because it's actually a, a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. So we're going to leave it like such. I'm simply going to say create, and what's going to be created for us is a timeline that is 1920 by 1080 at 23976. And if I double click on it, you'll see that our footage is looking pretty darn good here. This footage comes to us courtesy of CineStudy, as always when I'm doing my dailies workflow. Love these guys. And definitely check them out on the website that I have put on the screen right here for even more free content for you to download 
and work along with. All right. Now, when it comes to dailies, information is important. Now, uh, Resolve is not as much of a metadata machine as Resolve or as Scratch would be. Pardon me. But we still can put some burn-in information on the screen. Now, you might be thinking, well, Kev, where do we actually go about doing this? Because I really don't see anywhere in here that would you know, lead me to believe that I've got you know, all this information. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to head up to our workspace right here. And I'm going to come down to Data Burn-In. Now, we have to make a decision here. And I'm actually, it's actually good that I'm parked on sort of the fourth clip in here. We have to decide, do we want this information that's going to be burned in to be at the clip level or the project level? Now, when I say the clip level, if I come in and say, oh, okay, I'm going to actually add this at the clip level and probably the most important one, which is the source's time code, I'm just going to add that into the frame here for the clip, okay? And you'll notice that nothing has happened, okay? Well, something has happened. We just actually can't see it. The reason that we can't see it is because if you take a look, it says display during the first 24 and the last 24 frames. So if I jump back to the beginning and park it, there's our time code for our clip, Okay, now what's also important to keep in mind is that right now the timeline is actually reflecting the timeline's time code, but don't worry about that because when we actually render out, we'll have our time codes matching up. So in this case where I have source time code selected, I'm actually going to turn off display during and I want it just to appear the entire length of the clip. Now you'll notice that because I was parked over top of this clip, if I click on any other clip here, we don't have that burn in information just over this clip here. However, when we're doing dailies workflows, I'm just going to disable this here. What we would really like to do is actually have this information over the entire project. So what I'm now going to do is head back to source time code. And I think for the purposes of our workflow, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come down and I'm going to add, let's just add the source clips name. Now, of course, that source's name is huge. And to be honest, this text is really big in general. So I'm just going to shrink this down to be about 28. I think that's much better. And what I'm going to do with the source clips name is we're just going to park it at the top of our frame here. All right, let me just bring my burn in window over here. Just going to stick that right up at the top here. Very nice. Now, of course, I could position it left, right, wherever I need to put it based on how much information I want to put on the screen because we can obviously start putting stuff wherever we need it to go. All right. So all I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to close the data burn in window right there. And you'll now see that as I come through and I go to different clips, the time code will jump. But the burn in information is over every clip in this timeline. Now, what I can do is I can come back to the media pool through the edit module. I can come down to card two. I can select everything. I can right click and you see how this process goes. It's going to be the same for each timeline that we're going to be working with. Now, obviously, this is a huge organizational help here. And if you're coming back to Resolve to do your final online, this is actually a good way of working as well. So you now have all the information in this project. Resolve knows where it all is. It'll be fairly easy to relink to all this media when you're done your offline inside a media composer. All right. There is one last step of the way that we have to do though. First, we're going to need to get in and to render this media. Now, since I've set it across the entire project, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'll do it to one more here. So let's create a new timeline. We'll just call this card two. Okay. Again, one audio track, use custom settings. Everything should still be the same as it was before. Perfect. Let's double click on card two. You'll see there's our time code and our clip information. Looking all good. And we're now ready to output this. So I'm going to jump down to the deliver module. Now, once we are in the deliver module, this might look a little bit daunting, but it is actually not. Again, like I said earlier, we're going to be setting up for a DNX HD 36 set of dailies. So what we're going to do is we're going to set things up first. So the format is QuickTime. The codec is going to be Avid DNX HD and we want 1080p 36. Now, as far as the audio goes, this is all looking good in here. However, right now, if we were to output, in this case, card number one, we'd be outputting a single clip of basically all these clips in one timeline back to back. And I don't want to output a single clip. I want to output individual clips. All right, now you'll notice nothing's changed in the video, nothing's changed in the audio. The only thing that becomes relevant at this point is the file tab. Now, inside the file tab, what I want to make sure that I do is use the sources names. Okay, not custom names because I want the names to match the names of the clips that I had brought into Resolve before. 
Now you'll see that we can come down and we can preserve the source directory levels. And you'll notice that right now the preserve path is actually grayed out. It says preserve zero directory levels. And you'll notice that what happens is, is that as I add directory levels, you'll now see that everything's going to be exported to the desktop into a folder called card one. But I don't want all the clips in the same folder. I want them in the original, when I say the original folders, I want them in folders named as the original folders were named when I brought these clips in. So we're going to head one more level here to level, level two. You'll see the preserve path is in horror show card one. Now keep in mind, because I have this laid out based on a sequence by sequence basis, once I call up card two, this will obviously change to be card two. So what I'm going to do now at this point is I'm going to come back to the video module and make sure that in the advanced settings, that when we come down to data burn in that right now it's set as the same as the project, which means that it's going to be turned on. Maybe you like to edit with all this information on the screen, but at the end of the day, when you're creating approval files or anything like that, you want to actually turn that off. You can actually disable it right from here as well. All right, data burn in, none, but we want it the same as the project. So what I'm now going to do at this point is I'm going to add this to the render queue. What I'm also going to do here is I'm going to do the exact same thing with card number two. Now let's switch to card number two. There we go. You'll see that I am again inside of the individual clips. Let's just come back here. Perfect. Inside a file, we're going to the source's name. We're going to make sure the files use the source's name. We're going to preserve two levels you'll see the preserve path is card number two. Let's just come back to video. We'll double check that we are the same as the project. Perfect. We are DNX HD 36 and we have two channels of audio. I'm simply going to again add that to the render queue. And what I'm going to do now is deselect everything and say go. Now, to be honest, this is going to be fairly quick, so I can just keep talking. I'm not going to speed anything up in this process. And what we're going to do when this is done, I'm going to just go back and just show you how we can do the same technique without getting in and doing this on a, I'll say really a folder by folder basis. Because again, like I said, you might be doing this or setting this up to be, you know, something that you're not going to finish in Resolve or finish in the Avid. Maybe you are going to finish it in Scratch. All right. So it really is not going to make a big difference or, you know, you could be sending it off to finish it somewhere else. It's really not going to make a big difference how you set things up inside of Resolve if you're going to be utilizing that workflow. But what I recommend is if you are going to be finishing in Resolve, go with the workflow that I've shown you so that everything is nice and organized in the project when you send your timeline back via AAF. Now, as this is going, what I can even show you is, is I'm just going to hide out of Resolve. And I want you to take a look at my desktop here because I do have a folder called, appropriately enough, Horror Show. Inside that folder, I oh, look at that. I have a folder called card one that contains all my clips. And I have a folder called card two, which is what is currently rendering inside of Resolve. Now, the important thing that we're going to need to know is that if I right click on this and I come down here to say open with, where's my open with? There we go. I'm going to open this with switch is that when I open it with switch, you'll see there's the burn in time code at the top and the bottom. However, one thing that's important to keep in mind inside of Switch is that you'll see time code made by Switch. Nope, I want to see the QuickTime time code track so that I can see that my time code 01012619 matches 01012619. So I know that the time code has been attached to this clip, burned in, and the clip's name has been burned in as well. So now when I send this to Media Composer, I now know that I'm all going to be set for a completely round trip workflow. So let me just quit out of switch here. I'm just going to come back and resolve here. Let's see how far, how much more do we have to go here? I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. To be honest, I can stop this because you see how this is going to work now. And what I want to do is I just want to head back to the media module for one second here. I'm going to delete horror show and I'm just going to remove. I'm also going to hide this here and I'm going to delete that folder there. Perfect. And I'm going to come back to DaVinci Resolve. And what we're going to do in this case is I'm going to come to the media folder into dailies and into horror show and I'm simply going to take horror show and just drag the folder in. So what resolve is going to do is it's going to completely ignore the folder hierarchy that's contained within that folder. Now all I'm going to do is select everything like I did before. I'm going to right click and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say create new timeline using selected clips. Now again nothing different than what I had done before here. The big difference however 
is going to be, and let's just come to our timeline, perfect, the burn-in is there, is when we come to the render module, again, there's no organization inside of Resolve, everything's just lined up back to back. To be honest, I'm not even sure if these clips are in the right order as far as how they came in. Maybe it's card four, card two, card three, card one. But I'm just gonna make sure here that I am still at DNX 36, which I am. The burden's the same as the project. Audio's good to go. And with the file, we're using the source's name, preserved two levels. And you'll see the preserve path is horror show card one as an example. This is gonna change based on where each one of these clips comes from. So at this point, if I was to add this to the render queue and I was to simply say go, we'll give Resolve a second here to start rendering a couple of these off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hide out of Resolve and you'll see that that horror show folder has been created and inside it is a folder called card one. And there are the clips that are currently rendering into this folder. And once we get to a card that is obviously different from card one, Resolve will get in, create all of those subfolders, and organize things accordingly. So again, like I said, this is really a depends on your workflow type of thing. Now, you could completely ignore the hierarchy if you wanted to, if you didn't really care about that. I normally like to preserve the hierarchy just in case at the very last minute, you know, the producer director says, oh, by the way, we're going to go and finish this in uh, Assimilate Scratch, or oh, by the way, we're going to go finish this in DaVinci Resolve, or wherever they happen to be saying they're going to go and finish it. This way, you've kept the hierarchy. Everything is nice and organized for you, whoever you have to send it to. So this way, you don't get the reputation of being a messy editor. Everything was exactly the way that you created it, coming from DaVinci Resolve. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a of Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.